Hi there, my name is Ken Mayer. I'll be your instructor for this course. Now, I've been in the uh, IT world for the last 30, maybe 31 years, and over that time I've had the opportunity to see a lot of applications, watching them evolve from the days of uh, the monochrome screens, everything being DOS-based or applications created on our Unix servers, working with dumb terminals, all the way, of course, as we uh, continue to see uh, applications evolve into what they are today. During that time, I've uh, also had the opportunity to uh, do some teaching with uh, a variety of different applications, a lot of Microsoft Office and other uh, key vendors. So I'm hoping that with my experience in the use of applications, the teaching that I've done, that I'll be able to bring some extra key points for you as far as helping you understand what key applications are. So in this module, we're going to talk about application features. That's basically talking about those things that are uh, in common with all applications, your commands, uh, the way in which we manipulate Windows. And the nice thing about that is consistency, and that's very important. Most all applications that deal with any type of uh, presentation are going to have uh, options for different types of formatting, formatting of uh, text or of numbers, making things bold, making them metallicized, uh, changing formats of uh, times, uh, the way that you show time on a, on a form. Uh, we're also going to look at the uh, options of navigating through applications. Again, the navigation are things like uh, opening, closing files, exiting the application, resizing windows. And then we'll uh, have a discussion about some of the multimedia options that we have. When we take a look at working with a document, if you can imagine, I've got a large uh, Word document that I'm using, and uh, we start off with uh, the typical uh, text and, um, you know, writing a nice little paragraph. I'm not going to write a whole story for you while I'm talking about this. But uh, sometimes uh, we want to be able to take information from one document and maybe uh, take uh, like uh, having a spreadsheet, which would be a little more like a table. So I'll make this pretty easy. And maybe it has uh, some uh, final summation of, uh, of values. And uh, we need to uh, grab that information and want to move it over. Uh, one of the ways you could do it is just leave both windows open or memorize it and then just uh, retype that word sum over here. Or we can start doing things like copy and paste. Now, copy and paste uh, we're going to look at, or cut and paste, are, are ways of uh, being able to take a value from one application or even from one part of an existing application and moving it to another one uh, it, by just making it copy and then pasting it into a new location. Now, Certainly, you've, uh, as you go through these courses, you've seen uh, probably a number of ways. But in many cases, you're going to find some speed in the way in which you uh, do the copy and paste by perhaps avoiding having to go all the way up to the very top of the menu bar and finding the copy button or uh, having to uh, right click and see this big uh, list pop up and look for the word copy. Instead, you can use hotkeys. The hotkeys are keyboard strokes that you use to be able to make the same common functions like copy, paste, save, and cut. Now remember, copy is leaving the original text or value or whatever you copied in the same spot it was always at, and pasting is putting it in a new place. And all of these functions start by holding down the control key. Now the control key, depending on your keyboard, I'm going to assume uh, your keyboard is going to have the control key at the bottom left and right of your keyboard, same row as the space bar. You keep that key, the uh, control key uh, pressed down, and for copy, you would then hit the letter C. So you're still going to have to use your mouse to highlight whatever it is that you want. And once you've highlighted it, you just hit the uh, control C, move your mouse to the new location that you want to put it to, and then while holding the control key down still, do the control V for paste. Now, control S is a fast way to save what you're working on. Again, making it easier than uh, having to maybe hit a file menu and look at a drop-down box and finding the right option. And then the cut is the control X. Now, I've uh, probably mentioned this before, but I'll mention it again. A lot of people say, okay, I, the control X, I get that. That sounds like cutting something, right? Kind of like exit out. And control C, that sounds good uh, for copy. So then people ask me, why is it control V? instead of control P. And by the way, control P does work. That's a print function if you want to do a print. But the reason why is if you look at the keyboard, the keyboard shows the letters X, right? Then next to it is the letter C. And, uh, and so that, you know, sounded good for cut and copy. 
and then right next to it was the letter V. So I, in my opinion, we kind of used uh, something that doesn't sound like paste just because it was conveniently next to the cut and the copy. Now, some of the other things uh, that you uh, see as far as uh, commands uh, that are in common is the ability for you to be able to show or hide some of your data. And uh, spreadsheets are especially good for that. That you can, uh, you know, basically collapse a couple of rows and uh, basically hide them from people to, uh, seeing them, uh, but still showing them the uh, value or the summation. Many times it might be uh, that you're uh, wanting to control the release of information or uh, you might want to just uh, consolidate the page. Uh, maybe it's a very long spreadsheet and you want to move uh, as much onto one page as you can as far as what's visible, uh, but it, without uh, getting rid of the information. So again, this is all um, uh, things that are in common with most of the applications that you're going to be using. Printing, remember, control P if you want to do that plus the letter P. Now I put the plus sign, that doesn't mean you hit the plus sign, it's just adding it on, at the, meaning that you hit both at the same time. Uh, printing, of course, another common feature. By the way, one of the things that makes it so easy for uh, people to learn applications uh, was because of Windows. Microsoft uh, came up with these uh, common features, asked application developers to stick to those common features so that there is consistency. It's not just on Microsoft programs, but on so many other uh, programs or applications that you might use. And in fact, uh, for those companies who developed uh, their own apps that didn't follow these common features, they often didn't get very popular because it was like you have to relearn something completely new. Now, when you do a print, one of the things you're going to see is this print dialog box show up. The print dialog box, and this is if you use the print option that I'm talking about, the uh, dialog box uh, opens up and gives you the opportunity to take a look at uh, which printer you want to send this print job to. Now, when you look at the printers, and you don't see it here because uh, I'd have to scroll to the left, but uh, I can't scroll on a picture, you would see usually a check box or a check mark next to what we call the default printer. Uh, in fact, let's make uh, Ken's printer the default printer. So, we use the print option if we want to either change the printer or change which um, the option of printing everything to a certain range of pages or wanting to print to a file or make more than one copy or all of those things, uh, we use that as a feature rather than the quick print. The quick print basically doesn't give you this print dialog box. The quick print will just immediately go to the default printer and it will print all of your pages by one copy. So now I'm at the print. Here I get to select maybe a different source for doing my printing. Maybe I want to change the number of pages. Now if I don't want to print the entire document, you could put, as it shows here, a range of pages. You could say maybe page 1 through page 10, and that way it would uh, print those 11 pages. If um, you, uh, or I'm sorry, 10 pages, I was thinking page 0 to 10. Uh, so it'll print those 10 pages. Or if you're looking at that document or that spreadsheet and your mouse is selected on a certain page or has a certain uh, set of, uh, of uh, data highlighted, the highlighted information would be the print selection, the stuff you highlight with the mouse. The uh, page that you're on would be the current page. So that's, again, you're getting options about how you want to do these prints. Now, some of the properties that you have as far as how to uh, send your print jobs um, might change depending on the type of printer that you're using. Through this print capability, uh, as far as this being in common to, as I said it again, common to all the applications, uh, you can choose the number of copies that you want and it normally would pay, if, it, if you said pages 1 through 10, it would print uh, page 1 through 10. Let's say I said I wanted two copies. Uh, page, uh, print page 1 through 10, and then start over at 1 through 10 again. Uh, you could also collate it, where that it would pay, if you said two copies, it would uh, print page 1 twice, then page 2 twice, then page 3 twice. Uh, and it, again, I think, you know, it kind of depends on the destination of uh, the uh, capabilities of the printer. Some of these uh, machines are fantastic. They can uh, collate it for you. They can uh, bind it up, print them together, sort them out, all the uh, kind of cool things that you can do. So uh, you'll just want to make those choices based on the uh, printer that you have. Some other common features that we see are editing functions. 
Now, spell check is kind of fun. I purposely misspelled some words. So you can see uh, as an example of what spell check was designed to do, which is to give you some sort of warning that uh, it doesn't recognize that as a dictionary word, giving you the opportunity to not embarrass yourself by uh, sending out some sort of document with horrendous spelling. Now, in a large document, again, if I have uh, a large document with a lot of text in it, so I'll make it look like I've got a lot of text, and maybe I have multiple pages that we're dealing with and multiple pages of text, um, and I'm looking for a specific word. Well, we do have the find function. Find, which you can, by the way, with a uh, hotkey, control plus F, or depending on the application, it may be under the edit menu item uh, to be able to find. What that does is it brings up a little box at the top of your screen. And, uh, and in that box, you put in uh, one or more characters of uh, what you're looking for. So if you're looking for a specific name, uh, you could just uh, type that in here. And once you do that, it'll take you to the first instance of that match, highlight it for you, and then you often will have a next or previous uh, option. Uh, I'll just put arrows. And uh, the idea of that is that uh, you click the next button and it'll go and find the next instance of that word. So finding is uh, just speeding up the process of looking for specific information. Now, let's say you have a common error, uh, or let's say I'm uh, writing a letter that says uh, Ken's going to be coming and teaching a class, but instead um, something happened to Ken, and uh, so now Jeff has to come. Uh, so what we could do is find all those instances of Ken, and you could then delete that and rewrite uh, the name Jeff. Or you could use the replace option. Find and replace means find this word, then replace it with something else. Now, I like to sometimes call that search and destroy. The reason I say that is if you're not careful with the way you uh, do your finds, oh, I don't want to say, uh, let's try to make this look the right way. So if I had a, a letter that said it was to Ken, and somewhere in the, in the letter I have the word token. If you're not careful and you're wanting to replace all the Ken's with Jeff, you would end up with a result that would say to Jeff, and then down here you'd have to Jeff, because it found that pattern. So when you are doing finds, you have the ability to uh, check and make sure that you're looking for the exact word match or a part of a word. Or maybe you want to make sure that it matches the case sensitivity. If you know that it's always going to be a capital K in the word Ken, you can add that. And that way when you do a replace, especially because there is such a thing as a replace all, uh, then you can hopefully have some assurance that you're not going to damage other parts of your, uh, of your data that you're presenting or your words. If you did, of course, we always have the undo. The undo uh, basically is designed to get rid of the last change that you made. Now, a change could be that you just typed a new letter, and instead of hitting the back arrow, you just uh, hit the undo button and it would go away and just be gone. Uh, or if you uh, deleted a whole word and uh, you didn't mean to delete that word, you could do undo. Depending on the application, you can do this undo, I think on some applications, up to 255 times. Um, it, that's uh, quite a, a number of things you can uh, get rid of or changes that you made that you can uh, get undo the changes. But let's say you started doing undo and undo undo and you uh, all of a sudden said, oh, oh, wait a second, I uh, hit that too many times. Then you can do a redo. Right? That's, uh, that's basically uh, changing your mind about the undo. Again, hotkeys for this, control plus the letter Z uh, is one that you'll use a lot. Redo is, you know, we don't use it all that much, but yes, uh, you, you'll uh, see all sorts of shortcuts hopefully. Now, um, having gone through all of that, I think pretty much you get the idea that, uh, like I said, with all of these applications that we have this ability. But one of the things I want to warn you is some versions of Microsoft Office, some of the older versions, once you hit the Save button, then you can't undo anymore. It, uh, you, you can do undos from that point on for changes that you make, but it won't let you undo some of your changes. So. Uh, you might want to make sure that you know uh, how that feature works as far as uh, setting it up. Okay, um, drag and drop, that's another way, of course, that uh, uh, we have uh, of moving data around. That's a feature we'll see on almost every application. That's uh, where you could, uh, you know, highlight some area of text, put your mouse over it, leave, uh, hit the um, 
uh, what they call a primary button, which is usually the left button with your index finger. Uh, keep that uh, uh, button pressed. Move the mouse down to where you want to insert that text. Let go with it, and boom, then you're done. Uh, kind of a, a way of doing a cut and paste, but doing it with the mouse. Most of the uh, applications that you work with are going to have the ability for you to set some preferences. Preferences uh, could be that you prefer a certain font style, and every time you open up uh, Microsoft Word, you want that to be the default uh, font style. Or if you uh, have a preference with the way you want a date or time to be formatted in a spreadsheet, uh, then we can do that. Uh, if you uh, make preferences you don't like, usually you have the option to go back to the defaults. We call them resets. So uh, all of those are very important to make it more productive of an application for you by having the ability to set that up. I guess we could say in a way that you're creating customization. Another way of doing customization is through the creation of templates. Uh, and by a template, what you can say is, all right, I have some preferences that I may use for form letters. Uh, another set of preferences uh, that I have for uh, internal documents, uh, internal memos. And so you could create these templates, customize each one with your choice of preferences, and use that as a starting page for uh, any new documents that you make. And of course, almost every one of the applications is going to have some method of supplying you help information. Uh, usually you'll see it under the menu bar with the word help, and from there you usually have an index of help topics, or the ability to search for certain keywords to uh, help gui give you guidance about how certain features may work within that application. When we're selecting data, we're almost always using our pointer device, our mouse, but we don't have to. But often what we would do is put our mouse at the beginning of where we wanted to uh, uh, select data, and then move that mouse to the end of the last of the selection, again with a click and drag. And, uh, and what that would do is highlight all of the information that uh, would be in between those uh, areas. Now, many times you're thinking, well, I actually want to copy the entire document. I don't want just a piece of it, and you don't want to start this click and drag and have to scroll through multiple pages. So you have the ability to do what's called a select all. Uh, in this case, select all is a control plus the letter A. And, uh, and that will select everything that's in that document. And then, of course, you could do your control C's and control V's or whatever else you need to do. Um, so I covered about how to select a section. Another way you could select a section is you could just click in, at the beginning, and you get that blinking cursor. Uh, at least that's what I'm trying to make it look like. I can't make my lines blink, but that's a blinking cursor, which is basically uh, your edit point, right, where you're going to be st uh, starting to type and then holding the shift key down. So, this is important. With the shift key, uh, plus your arrow keys, you can then move your arrow keys up, down, left, or right. And uh, again, so if I was wanting to select this one, I would uh, start uh, basically with clicking here to get my cursor. I would use the down arrow, down arrow, right, to get down to this line and then use the right arrow to uh, basically continue to highlight all the way to the end of where I wanted my selection. And then let go of the uh, arrow keys, let go of the shift key, and you have that, uh, that information highlighted. Another option that is common in many cases, especially in uh, databases and spreadsheets uh, and in some tables you might insert into your Word documents, is sorting. Sorting basically is uh, your choice of sorting alphabetical reverse alphabetical, uh, numerical, right, 1 through 10, or uh, I guess you could say lowest to highest. Maybe I'll just uh, write it that way. Uh, we'll just say uh, from low to high or from high to low. And it's just an easy way to help rearrange information in whatever format that uh, was important for how you want to present it. And again, they, uh, many of them, many applications, like if it was a spreadsheet, um, and, and this is true of uh, uh, not just spreadsheets, this would be true of uh, applications like Windows Explorer or File Explorer. Uh, when you see these uh, column headers and we're presenting information, uh, we can sometimes just click on the column header and that will automatically change the order that uh, it was in, the, the sort order. 
uh, and that makes it very easy to, rather than having to uh, highlight a bunch of information and then uh, try to find ways to sort. Formatting is something that you're going to find in common with many applications. The idea behind the formatting is uh, one of two things. Let's take text first, uh, kind of what we call the uh, font face. When we're uh, making uh, or typing in our regular text, you know, if I uh, use what we used to do in programming classes, the first program we made had to say, hello world. Uh, if you wanted to make some of these things bold, uh, then you could uh, just highlight that particular word, click on something like this big B, and that B would uh, make the bold-faced font. Now, of course, we also have the ability to uh, uh, use the uh, I for italicized. I don't think I could draw italicized words very well. I could certainly do an underlined one by the uh, U. And if you could imagine, they, they have hotkeys as well. Hotkeys would all start with the control. And if you're guessing, you're probably right, B for bold, I for italicized, and U for underlined. So that way you could highlight the text and just hit control B and you've got the bold taken care of. Now, uh, another part of uh, what we have to look at when we're creating text is also the paragraphs. The paragraphs, you might almost say, could be a part of a style, but we're going to talk about styles in just a little bit. Uh, the idea of the paragraphs is that some people may want uh, a certain amount of, uh, of uh, indenting so that the first line is uh, a little further in from the left margin than the next set of lines. Uh, and that's one style of, uh, of doing the, uh, of um, setting up your paragraphs. Others may just want to have an extra large space in between the paragraphs and have them uh, be uniform, in, at least in the length of the lines. And, uh, and, you know, those are, again, some of the settings that we can use, plus talking about how much space between the lines uh, that you want to be able to put in there. Now, that's mostly going to be affecting uh, the way in which we do maybe a Word document. But if I was working with an Excel spreadsheet, and uh, I had, uh, and we do use typing in paragraphs in many parts of our Excel spreadsheets. When you're working with a specific cell, and a cell, of course, would be that intersection of a column to a row number. When you are typing within that cell, you can also format what your text looks like. You can also choose how much space in between uh, the times you hit the uh, enter keys. Um, of course, you actually will have to hit Control Enter so that you uh, don't go on to the next uh, cell. But we have many of the same formatting options you'll find there as well. Now, on the styles, basically, the styles is uh, a way that you're trying to basically get all of these formatting options, a lot of these uh, uh, options that I just talked about. And I didn't even get into uh, being able to change the uh, color of the font itself. It doesn't always have to be black. Or the background behind the font doesn't always have to be white. Uh, and depending on the program, you may have some special types of uh, effects with your font that you want to use. But uh, you, you come up with all of these ideas of how you want uh, your uh, document or your uh, tables that you insert into uh, uh, maybe a, a spreadsheet or table that you insert into your uh, word processing. You, you format all of that information, uh, whether it's any of those uh, types of uh, software, even presentations and, uh, and uh, publications or any other application. And basically what you're trying to do is control the look and feel and uh, how the uh, display characteristics of the data would appear either on the screen or when printed or both. And uh, it's a way of, uh, I, I would like to say, it's just a way of saving your settings so that you can reuse those settings, especially if it's something that you like. Now, when you're navigating your applications, you're going to have many common types of options. When I say navigating the applications, I'm talking about navigating the menus and the ribbons or toolbars inside of that application. So, obviously, a spreadsheet is going to have a different set of tools and toolbars than a word processing program because in word processing, we're not doing mathematical calculations. I guess you could try to do a few, but uh, what we're doing is uh, creating a text document, uh, different in a spreadsheet or different inside of a database program. But what they have in common, as I was saying, is that they all have uh, the ability for you to open a particular program or, or a set of data that you are working with, whether it's opening a database or opening a file or opening uh, your spreadsheets. And of course, they have the option for you to close that. They also have the uh, options to save your changes or to do a save as. Now, saving your changes, I think, is pretty intuitive. 
you've done some updates to that document, you've done updates to that spreadsheet, you save those changes. But sometimes you might want to have what I call kind of like a version. A version is your way of saying, okay, I, I liked my original document and I'm going to make some changes, but if I don't, if I decide later I don't like my changes, I don't want to have to figure out what I did and change it back. So I could do a save as. A save as allows me to save that good document, the ones that I made changes with, and give it a different name so that I still have the original one I started with. So it's a very common type of uh, method of being able to have different versions available to you. Of course, almost all of them have the option for you to click on File, New. That's how I used to think of it because we always clicked on the File menu and these were where the options were. So we'd click on New and then sometimes we're going to be asked, hey, we have some templates that we have already created that you might like to use for this new document. I mean, it could just be a blank document or it might be uh, maybe you're going to create a new resume. And uh, we have some templates of uh, a layout of what a resume should look like to make it easier for you. So you don't have to remember how to do the bullet points or how to do the indents or creating tables. Inside, you have the option of changing the size of the windows. It is possible for you to have multiple documents open at the same time. And, um, and uh, so you want to be able to change that size of, uh, of the windows so you can see all of the documents on your screen, usually done by moving your mouse to the border of uh, one of the document windows and waiting for either uh, a horizontal double-headed arrow or a vertical double-headed arrow and then from there just doing a click and drag in whichever direction you want to change the size. Don't forget if you want to change both the height and the width you could move to one of the corners and then you'll get a diagonal double-headed arrow and you can click and drag from there. We also have the option to save our documents with specific views. If I don't want somebody to be able to uh, look at my information, I could save it as a read-only document. Uh, or if I'm worried about uh, the information, or maybe uh, especially if somebody's created some sort of script in the middle of uh, my Word document, and I'm thinking that that script could contain malicious uh, code, which it, it, it certainly could, um, I can open it up in safe mode. That means I don't want any of the scripts to run in the background. What kind of scripts am I talking about? Well, you, you know, let's say you're working on a legal document you have the ability to uh, set up a, a paragraph header that keeps track of which uh, you know, article number or whatever uh, the legal, uh, legal ease would be that uh, shows you those Roman numerals. And, uh, and those little things are automatic. They're made by Microsoft to work for you that way. You could create your own and it's called uh, creating a script. So you could do that. That's some really advanced parts of the applications. Of course, also the ability to zoom. You know, we type so uh, at a level that we can read what we're typing. Uh, and uh, sometimes when we're done, we're saying, okay, what's it look like if I looked at the whole page? So you could zoom out. So basically uh, shrink everything so that you could see what the whole layout looks like. Or zoom in if you want to get more detail in uh, some of the things like a presentation that you're working in. Multimedia kind of covers a lot of options, whether it's pictures, music, video, combinations of all those types of things. And, uh, and so a lot of your software has the ability for you to be able to work with uh, inserting that in. Um, you know, I'm kind of using uh, pictures, graphics, if you would, uh, as the example, because that's most often what we put inside of a document meant to be printed on a piece of paper. And uh, we have to worry about sometimes uh, whether or not the pictures the right size will fit and, uh, and you know, the orientation of the picture. So one of the things I, I thought I'd uh, bring up as an example, uh, just some of the ideas of what I can do with uh, some of the um, documents or, the, or pictures, graphics that you work with. Uh, this is just an example of Microsoft Office 2010, where I started with a very large picture and uh, basically went over to uh, the options to do cropping and, uh, of course, just highlighted the area that I wanted to keep. And, uh, and again, I could have done it by choosing the number of pixels in, uh, of the, uh, where the top right corner to the bottom uh, left corner, uh, but the click and drag was so much easier. And then, of course, clicking OK to be able to say, all right, I've got that part of the picture that I like. Uh, so resizing is different than cropping. Cropping, I mean, you might think that I resized the picture. I guess in a way, I just took a piece of the picture when I cropped it. Uh, I didn't take the uh, and change the original size of this picture. Now, the original size of the picture uh, which, you know, could be related, if you think to it, about the file size. I mean, some of these graphics can be uh, huge amounts of storage. 
Uh, but that's also because they have higher resolutions. They have uh, uh, the ability to, um, you know, as we talk about uh, the quality of the camera and the picture it can take, that um, I might say, okay, I like the picture as a whole, if I were to think of this entire picture, but the size of this file is so big uh, that many times I've, I've opened up a picture where I'm looking at the number that says it's only like, uh, you know, 40% um, of the zoom level. And I'm still not able to see the whole picture because it's so big uh, as far as the file. If I were to, like, uh, hit this plus sign and, and uh, zoom in, uh, I might see the actual detail of uh, the boats over here at the harbor. I mean, just, again, depends on the quality of the camera that took that picture. And so what you can do with resizing is basically say, look, this thing, if I printed it at its full size, would probably take uh, a, some sort of uh, huge, monstrous five-foot page of paper. Uh, what I wanted to do is be at its 100% size, but only be an 8 by 10. And so what you're basically doing is resizing uh, the uh, ability of uh, how you can zoom in on the picture. Uh, maybe there's a better way to say that. But I, I'm really trying to reduce the file size without reducing the quality. It's, uh, it's just uh, a way of uh, being able to say, uh, and often you, s you have things that say, you know, make this 50% of the size it was, right? So if you, again, blew it up to 100% and it was on a five-foot page of paper like you're creating a, a wall painting or something, great. But if that's all not what I want, I just want it to fit in the corner of a page, um, I'm just going to reduce that file size so that uh, it's already at its maximum value when you see it. All right, cropping, as I said, was just basically getting a piece of that picture. And uh, also orientation. Um, you know, sometimes a picture, uh, when you see it, you know, like sometimes you, you get a picture of a person you see on a web page, and they're um, uh, sideways because uh, somebody held their camera, and um, it's supposed to be a person with uh, arms and legs there. And they held their camera in a, uh, in a vertical position so they could get a full body shot, but when you got the picture, uh, everything's sideways. And so you could use uh, sometimes keys like this just to say, hey, change that orientation. So now I have that picture where the person is standing upright the way I want them to be. And with all of that, once you save the file, you can then insert it into any application that supports multimedia, which will be most of everything of Microsoft Office. That can be also a copy-paste. You could, after you uh, get the picture, right-click on it, choose a copy or Control-C, and, uh, and then uh, go to where in the Word document you want it to be, uh, do your control V or right click and paste and then it, you know your picture is going to be on that document and you can worry about how to arrange it at that time.